Hello and welcome to the COVID nineteenth episode of Tissues of Day, a comedy <laughs> show. Yeah, see what I did there? <laughs> it's a comedy show. Yeah, <laughs> uh, about queer culture and relationships. Actually, it's just our nineteenth episode, but I thought I might as well spin it a little bit. This episode out there, YouTube's and internets, is about the binary, uh, binaries and spectrums, one versus the other. The impact of this on our culture, our behaviors and mindsets, when we see things as A and B or black and white, and we have no sense of the middle ground. What does that do and how does that impact us? We're joined today by our very special guest, the one, the only, Amy Wilding. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. <laughs> of course. Thank you so much for joining us, Amy. Uh, they are currently working on Cut to an Evening of Improv Comedy. Ooh, let me do that again. They are working on Cut to an Evening of Improv Comedy, June 12th at 8 p.m. Eastern. If you are interested and would like to join, and you can also follow them at the Amy Wilding Show on Instagram. Any other social places that they can follow that same one? Not yet. Okay, perfect. That's great. Well, I guess the, the Amy Wilding Show on Facebook as well is my show page. Um, been a little bit dormant lately thanks to COVID, but. Uh, Definitely still a live page, so check it out. <laughs> yeah, even though the world isn't very lively right now, at least our pages are live. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, and uh, Amy, how have you been? Are you, like, we've all been sitting at home gaining our COVID-19 pounds. How have you I'll been? just back away from the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, it's... I still kind of liken this whole thing to a Netflix movie plot, you know, like if someone told me two years ago, this would be our reality. I would just, I wouldn't believe you. So I've been working the whole time too. So, um, you know, I get out of the house a lot more than a lot of people. Um, and, uh, I, I pushed back a little bit on online stuff at first. And, you know, I, I I'm now part of an online improv troupe. Um, and so I've been doing that, uh, weekly now for several months and just really sort of not, I don't know, a lot of times I just feel really disconnected from reality. Um, I guess because I'm still in a lot of denial about it, but compared to a lot of people in other places in the world, I mean, uh, we're very fortunate to live where we live and we're very fortunate to live where we live while we're dealing with this as a world. Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, for the most part, I'm doing well. Um, I uh, put an entire home gym in um, and uh, sort of amidst recovering from various injuries uh, and being 45 and also going through menopause, I kind of do this anyway with my <laughs> physical wellness. But um, no, I think I, I'm very lucky to be where I am and um, you know, I'm surviving COVID with an amazing partner and we just started fostering, uh, our second K4 pause service puppy. Uh, his name is Percy. He's a 10 week old standard poodle. So, uh, he's been in our house now for just over a week and we're like smitten. So amazing. That, yeah, that also really helps. Um, it's the best way to do volunteer work. I highly yeah. recommend it. Everyone, awesome so yeah great so that's Thank kind of me right now awesome you know i'm also fortunate because i am joined on this show by a very special person david david borja i caught you david i know i should have introduced you before i started to ask questions it's okay dead plant cares about me <laughs> dead plant was my replacement in the previous uh, episode <laughs> so this is uh, i guess my way of getting back at david yeah no worries um, <laughs> i didn't mean to derail anything are you keeping score are you keeping score like i got you back and then no no, no. I was actually <laughs> caught up at a freaking medical clinic that took far too long. And David was um, amazing enough to replace me with a dead plant because that's about <laughs> as exciting as I am. David Borja. <laughs> dead plant is no me. match. Dead plant yeah. is no match for the real Robert. You're like quickly <laughs> scrabbling through the house. What looks like yeah. Robert? This dead plant will dead do. Plant. Mm -hmm. Wilted, covered in dirt and possibly <laughs> in a pot or on pot. You know, one yeah, or the other. There you go. There you go. 
<laughs> possibly in a pot or on pot i love that <laughs> usually in a pot actually there's and, and how very are you famous... surviving covid robert just in oh, a pot or in on a pot, pot <laughs> or on there's, pot yeah <laughs> i think I, we've all been self-medicating during this period quite honestly yeah. oh yeah yeah there's various yeah. ways to uh get through it right Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. Uh, and speaking of ways of getting through it, we want ways to learn about you, uh, Amy, Amy, Amy. So we have a particular first segment we do in this show called the rapid fire questions, Ooh. where we're going to throw multiple questions at you, rapid fire, one after the other, back and forth between David and I, Bring you it. respond as quickly as you can. Don't think about it. Don't judge yourself. And we'll get to learn a little bit about you through your subconscious. Great. But before we do that, I realized I didn't even really say hi to David. So hi, David. Oh. Hi, Amy. <laughs> there was that moment where he left to teach a lesson to you. And then I didn't get to say hi. So hi. Hi. Very good to see you. It's been, I haven't heard your voice like in over a year, at least. I, I know it's been a while. Hey. Yeah. I like how Amy's hat matches David's chair. Ah, mm. yes, we right. the harmony emailed each other about that before the show. Yeah. And my shirt matches Robert's wall. Oh, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> wow. And right? nothing matches my background. But there <laughs> no. you go. But you have so much. Well, uh, the black in my shirt matches the black in your tapestry. I want to say tapestry. No, yeah. it's sort of a tapestry. Yeah. yeah. I feel okay. like this is my my this looks like a library set. Yeah, I like in the w wing tipped like or wing back chair. I think they call yeah. them wing tipped or something. It's a uh, wing back wing tipped chair. Sure. Yeah. I think wing tip is for shoes and wing back is for chairs. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, <laughs> next episode. Is it <laughs> right, it's on the list. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Everyone must know the answers mm -hmm. to those questions. Wings, um, just wings is the yeah, thing. I, just, I want go. Amy to be in it in this set so she can be introduced like very like old timey like story time with Amy. Yeah, like, yeah, welcome yeah. to Wing Back with Amy Wilding. Yes, I'm Hello, everybody. I'm available. I'm more available these days than uh, you know before. Um, all right, hit me. Rapid with fire. Your... Yeah. Uh, pie good. or cake? Hit me with your best shot. Oh, did I lose uh, Robert? Did I disappear? No, no. Go again. I don't know. Go again. Nope. Pie okay, okay. Or cake? Is that the first question? <laughs> Pie or cake? Yes. Cake. <laughs> Cats or dogs? Dogs. Country or city? Both. Last thing you ate? Uh, a very green smoothie, like everything green shoved in it. Mm. Drama or comedy? Comedy. A current turn on. A current turn on. Oh, mm -hmm. um, well, it'll always be the smell of fresh laundry. Mm. Yeah. There's nothing like doing it in a pile of clean laundry. This is a weird one. Have you cleaned your belly button today? Not today, but I always do. <laughs> you caught me. I have a dirty belly button. <laughs> ah, books or films, Amy? Oh, films. What's a pet peeve of yours? A pet peeve of mine is just people who don't want to learn about you, you know, so people who are closed minded. What's your middle name? Lucille. What's yours? Fraser. Oh, David. <laughs> Ephraim. Ephraim. Mm -hmm. Wow. See, I didn't know this about you too. What do you wish you could do more of? Make people laugh. Describe your aesthetic in one word. <laughs> That's such a great question. My aesthetic? Mm -hmm. um, don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. That's more than one word. <laughs> well, oh, it's it's a oh, difficult it's, it's a difficult it's one ask. Word with, it's one word with hyphens all throughout yeah. it. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, what's something you're looking forward to? making people laugh again live fill in the blank i have no patience for blank entitlement <sighs> when are you most likely to be fake <laughs> um probably when i'm nervous and a current addiction we're working out oh well let's yeah. wrap it up there i like nice. that nice nice um, that was a great round. That was good. <laughs> you won. You won, <laughs> Amy. Yes, ding, ding, ding. Yes. 
Um, you get I a like, wing back chair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And a makeover. Um, <laughs> I was not expecting the aesthetic question. I don't even know how I would really describe my aesthetic. Um, laid back, I guess. Is that, mm -hmm. that's two words. I can't do this. You just can't. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you said a major turnoff or pet peeve was closed mindedness because in a previous episode, Robert asked me something that turns me on and it was open mindedness. And Robert was like, Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's yeah. cool. I get it. I feel you. Yeah. Well, it's, it's really interesting. And maybe, you know, like we, sometimes I think some people do need to like sit down and think about like, what is my aesthetic? Like what, what is my thing? Cause like, mm -hmm. I think a lot of, in a lot of life, we just kind of walk through it and like put things on our bodies and put things on shelves and, and just kind of make things happen. And we like, sometimes we realize you know, that we don't actually know what our thing is. Yeah. Uh, so I, we're I looking for that. Ask myself that question a few times. We're looking for that zoom chat cohesion. You want harmonious colors. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Second. I just don't get asked that question very often either. So I appreciate you asking me. I think I'm definitely uh, relaxed. A relaxed aesthetic, I think, would be my, you know, I don't own any, I don't even own, like, if someone said, oh, you have to put on a, like, pressed white dress shirt. I don't even have a white dress shirt. I don't have, this is, like, dressed up. You know what I mean? Like, I just like to feel <laughs> comfortable. I could technically go anywhere. Like I, I want to dress like I could technically go anywhere within reason. Yeah. Right? Like I might be asked to leave some of those places, but most of them might be okay with me sticking around. You know, we actually have a show topic in the hopper, uh, David and I to cover fashion. I think we need to bring it out. I think we need to do oh, sure. it because um, I actually have a motto for like what I think everyone's fashion. There's like two rules to it. Uh, do you want to know, want to know what those are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Tease course. us. <laughs> I think one, it should make you feel confident. Uh -huh. And two, it should complement your body. I think those are the two major okay. things. Cool. Uh -huh. I think like, go. yeah, that's all that you need in fashion. You don't have to be I on trend. You don't have to be off trend. You know, it just, that's it. Well, I think you both know I've never done anything. Um, everyone else is doing it. So. Nice. Did, Did I cut out? Did Robert mm -hmm. cut out? No, no you are okay. not one of those individuals. <laughs> yeah, it's no, Robert's Wi-Fi. Uh, I think it like dips. So he gets mm -hmm. a little more laggy every uh, so often. That's cool. I'm yeah. really fortunate. I'm my wi my Wi-Fi is like, really good for some reason i don't want to jinx it yeah um <laughs> uh amazing let's go into our next big old segment round two section b it's all about the questions for thee do you know what this one's about it's the binary oh. so question number one around this is what are the benefits of binary thinking and organization of elements in our world so I'm going to throw this first to David. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was pondering and I, I think the benefits are just that it's simpler. It's just easier for people. And like, we just want things to be easy to understand and organized and just like sorted into neat little boxes. I really think that's all it comes from is just like a general laziness and like path of least resistance, you know, yeah. because, uh, yeah, and we can get into this more, but that seems to be where it's most useful is when you're solving simple problems of like, you know, do we want the lights on for the party or do we want the lights low? <laughs> like a very right. simple question as yeah. opposed to, you know, whatever else. Like, how do you feel about this political struggle? It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. OK, <laughs> you know, it gets yeah. way more complicated. Right. Definitely. And Amy, what's your thoughts on that one? Well, I think that, you know, to kind of echo what David said, I get, I get it, right? Because we all kind of, we all need that little box that we tick, right? And I think, like, I don't, but I'm just saying generally people feel more comfortable once they know, right? Mm -hmm. And it made me think of when I first was coming out as queer and just letting people know because you could almost feel a collective sigh in the room and shoulders go down once people know they go check right and it's almost like this like i'm right mm -hmm. Do you know what i mean like mm -hmm. okay and move moving on so you can like go check and move on and i think yeah. that david that's interesting you say that about like lazy or just like 
you know, may, maybe if you just don't have a, the answer to that simple question, you're going to like hamster wheel on it till you get yeah. the answer. So I yeah. feel like, again, to use like coming out to a room full of people as an example, then it's just like, okay, we all know we're all on yeah. the same page. Yeah. Um, for me, I don't really, I'm not doing that for me. I'm doing that for everyone else in the room so that then I can be comfortable. Right. So I think there's this, like, it's a little bit of a game of ping pong in a way like, okay, it's this, is it this, is it this, it's this. Right. And then you can kind of just, but I feel like, I don't know, I don't need, I personally don't need those answers and I don't need those boxes ticked. So I feel like we're doing as queer people, I feel like we're doing a lot of heavy lifting for people all day long in that sense. Yeah. Of, yeah you know, a binary world so that yeah. you can, you know, and that's where it's a parallel for me to people being closed minded, whether they mean to be or not, they need that. They need to know it's this way or, or, or that way. You know, right. That to yeah. say that black, to mention that black and white you brought up, it's just like, why do you need to be, why do things have to be so clearly defined? Yeah, I guess. I, I hear a couple of main things that come out of that. One is that I think as queer people, we're constantly coming out. There's usually this concept of coming out once, but you're actually coming out constantly throughout life because you're having to reestablish uh, who you are, what you're about to new individuals. Mm -hmm. And I don't think a lot of people realize that as like uh, coming out isn't a one-time thing. And sometimes in doing that, we sort of pick our battles about it. Sometimes you like come out, like you're like, oh, I'm queer versus, oh, I'm non-binary or, you know, like, um, you know, like I'm gay versus just queer, you know, like it's sort of like, depending on the audience you're talking to, you might adjust your approach. Mm -hmm. The second thing I heard in that is that I think a big element of it is, and it's to, to David's point too, is that it does make things simpler because I think as humans, we approach the world looking at it almost as chaos. And we use those labels. We use that categorization to make sense of things because otherwise everything's everything. And that's mm -hmm. just our brains can't handle it. We use that binary and this kind of extends outside of binary where you like, there's multiple labels obviously for certain things, but it's just sort of like that, the point you were making where it's just like, when people approach you, they're like, are they A or B? Well, now I know they're A. So it just suddenly simplifies the, like the tension releases. It just, the world makes a little bit more sense to them, but you're going to constantly have to do that over and over. And a perfect example actually happened to me today. You know, the prior show that we were recording that I had to miss because of medical appointment, um, I was talking about my sexual health to the doctor and the default was, he was like, you know, and the partner, she was blankety blank to blank. She, he immediately defaulted into like, it was a she, right. And I, at that moment, I was like, I'm just not going to correct him. I'm just going to say, yep. And it just went with the idea that, yes, I was sleeping with a man. Cause I'm like, just, I'm not ready to talk about anything else. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a good example of bringing up that, put, putting you in that position, right. Of like saying, and sometimes we just don't have the spoons to, to, to put it in like a teaching kind of moment or scenario. Um, and I mean, I think, that's an also a great example of like when you Robert in that situation choose to make it a teaching moment or, mm -hmm. or not. Right. Mm -hmm. And I feel like sometimes, and I'm, I've done it too. I'm with you. And, you know, um, having moved to, out East too, like I, I just found, I've found that for the, I've been here now for almost three years and I find that I get like Missy ma'am girly, you know, and I don't like any of those and I never have. And I just go through life as Amy, but like, if I stop and think, how does someone see me? My choices wouldn't be Missy ma'am girly. Right. So, and when I have the spoons and when I have the time, I, I correct people and I'll often say like, please don't ma'am me. And this is why, and I'll do that. Like, like you, Robert, I'll do the, like, is this person going to be receptive to this? So I go kind of off of energy first. And if they're not, if I get that strong energy pushback, I'm not going to bother. But if I feel, now again, it depends on the situation, of course. But like in passing, if someone mammed me and I turn around and I'm about to say, don't mam me and here's why. And I get that. I'm just like, it, you also have to be, you have to feel safe, right? So it puts us in these positions of not feeling safe and we're constantly doing this quick 
like sensory check of like, am I safe enough in this moment to share this with you? Are you going to receive it? So it's this constant, you know, it's parallel to what you said. We're always coming out. We're constantly coming out and being queer and then being non-binary and feel finally feeling safe to express that publicly to people. I, I feel like I'm constantly coming out in two ways. Yeah. Like so, multiple times like multiple in one moment. Times, yeah. Right. And, and for the longest time, I just told people I wasn't concerned about pronouns, but I always have been. So I finally started to use the pronouns that are right for me, which is they and them. And I finally started to get on board with that because I realized that I was letting other people dictate to me what my pronouns should be. And I wasn't, I was just tired, but I realized I was going to just be even more tired if I didn't uh, take on the pronouns that are right for me and share that with people. And again, I'm still, it's still, you know, I'll, I'll get misgendered all the time and I let it go. And then there's times when I don't let it go. And I think, again, that goes, mostly that comes back to a safety place. Like, am I safe? Will I be safe sharing this? And that's, that's again, part and parcel to coming out, right? We're constantly coming out and we're constantly like, you know, our hearts pounding when we do that, right? And yeah. it just made me think of something too. It's like, we're constantly coming out, but straight people don't have to come out. They're never constantly coming out. So they don't understand that feeling of, yeah. it's not like they walk into a room and anyone is suit, like no one's ever asking that question. Is that person straight? Yeah. Well, I think right? it's almost like they're, they're kind of left with, there's like an A and B scenario. If A is the default, you know, the straight more, uh, let's say mass community of like heteronormative people are going to be like, they're going to walk in a room and everyone's like, Oh, you're a until I hear otherwise. Right. And so we're constantly having to navigate that B scenario um, or that alternative scenario, the B, C or D, whatever it might be. Um, David, I'm going to plug in my computer with power. Cause I just realized I'm dying. Yeah. Have you mentioned where you've had to like re come out or navigate whether or not you want to come out, like whether or not you want to change the label that's assumed. Um, as far as labeling, ooh, that's a very good question. I mean, I honestly go to a place of like politics and religion with a lot of binary stuff. Um, because anytime talk about uh gender and like sexual identity and like body parts and all of that stuff comes up i'm just like hey you know like whatever you're experiencing i'm not gonna like invalidate that experience so like however you want to be respected i'll respect you it, it seems very simple to me but a lot of people um are struggling with that uh and it's the stuff that you folks are talking about of just like the yeah, A and B thinking, is this person straight or are they gay? Are they gender conforming or are they non-conforming? And like just all of this stuff. Um, so as far as like politics and religion, I definitely very often someone will be like, hey, are you like progressive? Are you liberal? Are you left leaning? And I'm just like, probably, but I don't know what you think those mean, like those words mean. So uh, what is the exact issue we're talking about? And same thing with religion. I'm, I'll say like, I grew up kind of Protestant Christian, but as of right now, I have no idea. Um, like, what do we want to talk about regarding religion? I'm very curious about where people come from. So like we were saying before, it always, I always try to like set a foundation of open-mindedness as opposed to like a foundation of let's just load up with assumptions about each other. Cause we don't know each other, you know? Right. Yeah. And I think a lot of that dialogue will help to clarify that, right? That's where it's, I think I probably, Amy, you probably run into this a lot of like, of course, it's almost like I give a bit of leeway to anyone because of pathways resistance, humans are innately lazy. And then a lot like we want to go around and make sense of the world and think of things as A or B in that. And when somebody kind of defaults to something and they might be incorrect in that assumption, um, I'll give them the B I'll say like, no, actually this is the snare and I'll just let them have it. I'll leave it be until it kind of keeps happening. And then it becomes a pattern as opposed to a one-off. Uh, I feel like you've probably run into those scenarios a bunch, um, being somebody who is non-binary. Oh yeah. I mean, like I said, moving out East being mammed all the time, which just to me is 
I'm like, really? Because it was kind of the opposite in Vancouver. I would get called sir all the time, which I don't even really mind. Like if, if I had a choice between Missy, girly, ma'am, or sir, I would choose sir. But I don't even really like that either. But just to just how people see you and this, there's this like shift in, you know, maybe your energy that day or whatever, which I'm, I'm learning to embrace too. So to sort of contradict myself, like I am, you know, I identify as neither male or female, but kind of in the middle, obviously in a female vessel, but on any given day, I just move through my day. I just feel like me. I don't really feel male or female, but because I've got both energies, if you will, coursing through me, maybe I'm, maybe my energy is more female to that person. I don't know. But for me, like ma'am makes me cringe. Right. And I'm just like, I don't, I'm like, why is this person seeing me like that? But to kind of echo what David said earlier, what does that even mean to that person? Right. So we're constantly like playing this game of how do you see this? How do you see that? How do you yeah. see me? Yeah. How do I see me? Right. Yeah. So this game of like, and I, I think to, yeah, constantly kind of not being like, I think for people seeing me, I probably confuse a lot of people, right? Because I'm neither, and I'm kind of this hybrid. Of, You're something in between, right? Yeah, like, which no, is totally. amazing. Yeah, um, I think I always have been, right? I, my whole life. And so I don't, I think it just, and I think people for the most part, like, I can agree with you to a point about the laziness, but then it made me realize, like, I think a lot of people try their best, especially if you've already told them, right? Like you said, oh, we feel like we're always coming out. We feel like we're always explaining our pronouns or, you know, who we are in the world, where we fit in the world, according to us, right? And, and people try to do their best. So I do feel like if you share that part of yourself with someone that you see on a regular basis, like say a, a work friend or something, and you're, you're, you feel like you're constantly telling them, then I think, you know, that can be exhausting because it's like, yeah. don't you hear me? Don't you see me? Right. So I feel like in certain instances that work needs to be done a little bit more than just a person, you know, that you, again, you might have the spoons to take the time to say to this perfect stranger, Hey, this is me. And this is why. And I've had some great experiences with perfect strangers. Actually, they do want to listen and they do. They're very fascinated. And they're very happy that I, that I told them that like I had a, a coworker. Um, this is like about a year ago. Now I told him at the time I was still identifying as gender fluid, but I just didn't really, I, I don't really like even the word gender, to be honest with you. So non-binary just speaks to me and describes me a lot better. But at the time I was still identifying as gender fluid and I, and I came out to him and he didn't know what that was. And he was just, he's like, you're my, and it was just such a lovely moment. It was very sweet and, and very innocent on his part. He just said, I've never had a gender neutral friend before. <laughs> and it was just, and I didn't feel like it was just done in such a, uh, loving way, but he was admitting that I was the first person. And you know what? He probably has other gender neutral friends or non-binary friends that probably have never come out to him or they're in his world. Right. But for someone to say that and then explain it, and when you explain it, you can see people kind of go, Oh yeah. Yeah. And when you explain it to people like that's in you too, if you want to explore it, because I really feel like we've got many energies flowing through us. And again, back to what I said earlier on any given day, it might be more of this. It might be more of that, or it might be a, a hodgepodge. Right. And to let people know that they can tap into themselves that way. Some people are blown away by that. Some people, you know, they don't think that way yeah. or whatever. But yeah, and I want to extend this question and kind of speaking of the benefits is like outside the binary into the spectrum. I think there is something very freeing to what you're talking about around um, knowing that there's a spectrum. And knowing that there's more than just an A and B and that there's something really freeing in that. And that's something I came to really terms with as I got older and more accepting of my queer nature of that, like my um, behavior and expression and outward appearance, right? My kind of uh, gender expression and, and everything associated with that didn't have to necessarily be 
just masculine or just feminine depended on the day, depended on how I was feeling. And there was something yeah. so freeing about that, about suddenly like I can adjust based off who I, you know, or how I'm feeling and where I'm at and who I'm with in that. And I shouldn't be afraid of it. I don't have to stick to that A and that A and that A every single time. David, I feel like you've had exploration within that space too, um, of kind of like the going into the more spectrum side of things. What benefits has that provided you? Uh, excellent question. Excellent question. <laughs> because, you know, I, I do want to touch on at least uh, there's one very notable activist named Alok Vimanan, who you can look up on social media. And they talk about all this stuff in like a very deep way, in a way that like resonates with me a lot, because it's not just about gender. It is about a whole paradigm of like binary thinking that affects most people. Um, and something that has really like, I don't know, that really rocks my world is binary thinking in terms of like spirituality. Like I mentioned religion, uh, before as well. Um, and like spectrums and all of that stuff ties into our relationship as a self and our relationship with whatever we classify as non-self, like things that are other. Um, because in my like personal opinion or like my belief or whatever is uh, like everyone has some form of spirit, some form of thing inside that is not their body and is not their brain. Um, and when we start to internalize this feeling of like, oh, there's like an awareness inside of me. There's like a life inside of me that is separate or like that is really actually part of, you know, like all of existence and like all living things and all like things in the universe. Like, like that's really what I start to think about when I think about um, it's literally called non-duality. It's this practice of, you know, seeing the spectrum between what we inhabit and everything around us and how like, it's all one thing and it's all worthy of love and it's all like, you know, really precious. And I think, <sighs> I think that informs a lot of how I approach conversations. It's how I'm approaching uh, my work and like any of that stuff. So as far as like what people need to learn or like benefits about all of that, it's just like, really think about it. Like wherever, whatever religion you come from, like, how do you define God and how do you relate to God? Is God something separate from you? Or like, is there a part of God that is always in you that like makes you stronger and actually brings you closer to other people who you think are very different from you, but actually they might not be. Yeah. And, and I think there's a lot of, uh, especially when it comes to like, you know, love based things, positive things and things to take care of. And that's where we get a lot of advantage by looking at the other end of what we see ourselves as and the, literally the remainder of that spectrum and, and the ability not only to enter it, but to explore it. So I want to transition this into our second question around you know, what are the negative things that we have been impacted by from binary thinking or the binaries? So to Amy. Um, you know, just, I was thinking this whole time I've been thinking about, makes me think of walking into a clothing store and how you walk, you know, to a certain point you're walking down the middle and then it just splits off into women's clothes and men's clothes. And how many times I've gone into a store and I just head right to the men's clothes just because one, they fit me better. Two, I just like them better. Three, they just, they're my clothes, right? Like the, the, the clothes I've always put on. But more and more lately, I've just been thinking like, imagine if you just walked into a clothing store and there was just clothes, mm -hmm. right? Like that's how I think of it. And I think like that's more, like it's a really simple drilled down way to kind of explain it but just literally like you know it can be so much easier gender. to organize like the negative the negatives of a binary world are that we're kind of it's kind of dictated to us like even if you're a gender fluid person non-binary person you're still hit with that right it's in your eyeballs all the time like it's a or B, really, if you think about A and B again, you've got a clothing store is A and B. And if you try mm -hmm. to kind of, you know, manipulate it to suit your needs, that's when you're getting, you know, you're that person in the store that's like, and I get, you know, people get so less and less 
but still happens. Like people will be like, oh, um, you know, I still get like, that's the men's department. Yeah. yeah. Or I the see, other I way see. around. That's um, like, I need to wear bras, right? So I will head into the women's department to get bras, but not every person who wears a bra is in a female body or yeah. identifies as a female, right? Yeah. Yet they have to go into the women's section to get a bra. So you march in there and who wants to buy a bra? Anyway, it's a horrible experience. They never fit. They're not, who are they made for? I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> so you'll do, 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 you know, today, today is the day I'm doing it. And you've got to, for someone like me, you've, it's a day because it sucks. So anyway, bra day. this, this is how I walk to get a bra. <laughs> Everyone should walk to get a bra. Right? So I, I'm, I'm, getting doing a bra. It, I'm doing it and I'm like, get there as fast as possible so that, you know, this doesn't happen. Oh, you're in the women's department. You know, it's like, you get the like is it a, a is it a store. gift is it a gift yeah, for somebody yeah yeah Ugh. can i gift wrap that bra for you um <laughs> i'm gonna wear it out okay is that all right you don't have to wrap it <laughs> put it on now yeah, just i'm gonna put it on now but yeah i don't know if my point's making any sense but i just think that we need to there's just always seems to be a line down the middle and if you use a closing store as an example there's that line and for me, as soon as I walk into a store where that split down the middle, I'm just like, oh, you know, and I just I think that, you know, I want if the perfect clothing store for me, like you said, Robert, would just be like a mix, well-organized store. But it would just be like pants, shoes, shirts, dresses and just have at her. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think it's been um, it's, it's been so ingrained in us societally that so and so wears this, so and so is so and so wears that. I don't know if you remember, like years ago, Ashton Kutcher wore a utila kilt. Do you remember what a stir that caused? Sort of, yeah. It was a but long that, time that was a ago. big deal, right? That this like masculine presenting, identifying person would be wearing a kilt, and that and to sort of get around it, they called it a utila kilt. And it was like a functional, you know, it's got all these pockets in it. And it's like, it's, they actually are very functional. It's basically the equivalent of camouflage or uh, cargo pants, sorry, you know, with the pockets. And it's like, yeah. who, you know, you know, you know what's separating a utila kilt from cargo pants? Some stitching. Yeah. 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 Right? And it, and it's just like I, I feel I, I and I totally hear that um, because I am masculine presenting for the most part depends on the day uh, and uh, identify as masculine and male in that. But there are days where I've wanted to go into the women's section because I've seen something of interest and I immediately feel that crossing of the divide, that discomfort that comes with it in that. Mm -hmm. And there's now been splits in areas of consumer products that I think have been almost like a reversion in an unfortunate situation, like men's only moisturizers and like men's line of products and the, you know, the pink tax, they like call it for, for uh -huh. female identifying people. Oh, just shit. Like, why, why did we need to make it worse? Like we're making progress yeah. in other areas where it's just like, if anything, you're probably complicating your product line more and confusing your consumers more and making the actual like management of it, all of it even more difficult. So I yeah. just find that really odd. And, and my biggest thing, around the negative aspects of binary thinking, I think it's still going to always be around and it does benefit kind of structure in our world. But the biggest pr problem for me is around, it, I feel like it causes a bit of a dog on a bone scenario where if somebody believes in A, they'll gra lash onto it. And in order to go outside of A, they have to let go of it and go straight to B, right? right. They have to like let go of their thought, their value, their opinion. And they're just like, no, I don't want to let go of A. I don't want to let go of A because maybe... You can go into like, you know, A plus one, A plus two. Like you can just go a little further. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. David, any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know who decided that men are only supposed to wear like black, brown and blue uh, and maybe a white dress shirt. But just like the availability of colors in men's clothing really gets under my skin so much. Um, and sometimes it depends on the store. But like, yeah the whole time you were talking, Amy, I was just like, yes. And the colors, like the yes. colors are such an issue for me. Um, because I mean, people have seen, like, I like color. Like if they even looked around my room, I mean, they'll even see like 
you know, I just keep that umbrella, a colorful umbrella on the back, <laughs> like yeah. just anything, anything to spruce things up and keep it away from dull drab gray, the corporate right. approved male colors, you know? Right. Yeah. 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 And so what I'd like us to do, I want to be wary of time as well, is the final thing is around education. So what do we feel society needs to learn more about in terms of spectrums and the gray areas of life? The fact that there is more beyond the binaries. What more could we do there, Amy? Well, I definitely feel like we need to move into um, just teaching. It needs to be part of our education system. And I think that's we're moving more and more into that for sure but i mean like when i was going to school they were still trying to make me right-handed you know so that's like that, to talk about like did you get whacked by a ruler or anything um i didn't get whacked by a ruler but i did i got kicked out of like every class i was in but the i had a typing teacher and he would walk behind the desks with this giant pointer stick and as you were typing he would be like so He'd be chanting F T F space, but he would be like whack, whack, whack space. <laughs> so he never huh. hit me, but I felt like I was being hit yeah. the whole time. <laughs> and then I got kicked out of typing. So I've ne I don't really know. I can type really fast, but I don't type. I don't have that perfect. Um, anyway, we went off on a, me not being able to type, but um, yeah, just the educational piece of it. And like, you know, you're taught like, you know, even in junior high, I remember taking this family studies course and it was all female identified people and one boy. And I was just like always thinking to myself that takes guts for that one boy to take that family studies class. And all of his friends made fun of him. And the class was all about like, you know, it was geared towards um, cisgendered females. Um, and it was, we saw some horrific birthing videos that should never have been made, um, just out, purely out of respect for the person giving birth. But anyway, mm. they were traumatic and it was very narrow minded, you know, and it was just like girls do this and boys do that. And I remember even before that in grade six, I think I got my first, uh, sex ed class and they split the boys and the girls up and they sent them into separate rooms and sex ed to me is just should be like a fluid, you know, collaborative sort of learning experience. But it was just like all these facts were just like screamed at you and there was overhead projections and none of it made any sense because I mean, we were in grade six and then this whole idea of like, Oh, the boys are going to learn this and the girls are going to learn that. And just how I just remember even in grade six feeling that divide and just like not and also kind of probably in the back of my mind, knowing I didn't really belong in either room. Mm. Mm. Like, why, why do I have to go with the girl? There was always this, like, why do I have to go with the girls all the time? You know, like, mm. and I can only do what girls are doing and I can't do what boys are doing. And I was the only girl that played street hockey. And, you know, I was very, um, I, I was just always different that way to everybody else. Like all the other girls would be like, why do you want to play hockey with the boys? And it was like, I like hockey. You know, it was just that simple. I like this, not, and, you know, and I remember there was this kid getting beat up in the neighborhood because he carried a baby girl doll with him. Mm. He was probably about eight years old and he loved this doll and it was a girl doll. That's how the doll identified. And he was getting beat up for carrying this doll around. And I just remember thinking to myself, like, who, even, even at a young age, like I probably didn't have a fully processed thought sharing it with you now it's a process thought but that you know that those niggling thoughts as a kid like really that thought fully formed now is who gives a fuck what he's carrying he likes it why does it affect you the person that's you know well beating him up yeah right so that's the thing that i can't wrap my head around i've never been able to is why do you care so much about me and what I'm doing and what I'm wearing or not wearing or what section of the store I go into or who I love or who I sleep with. or It, it just blows me away that we care so much about that. Yeah, too much so. Right? David, it, yeah, yeah. David, any thoughts on what education needs to happen out there? I mean, I feel like I say this almost every other episode, but I think the more people realize that like conflict drives 
like consumerism and like is just fueling like the concentrations of wealth that are at like the tops of media companies and influencing politics and all of that stuff. I think the more people realize all of this, like squabbling, so to speak, or like, you know, scuffles about politics and policy and stuff. Um, uh, all that does is like fuel this machine that like goes straight up and doesn't benefit any of us. I think we can all like start getting on the same page and being like, Oh, right. It doesn't matter that much. Like Amy was saying, like, why do I give a shit? <laughs> like what all these, uh, what anyone is doing with their sexuality, with their gender, with their friend groups with their like polyamory groups like any of that stuff with their kinks this is a whole other thing that robert and i have touched on Mm -hmm. um like kinks not being allowed at pride like who cares it's all you know just like a shaming culture that's like oh let's not talk about it because then it's safer and it's like actually you not talking about it is just giving more power to the people who make the rules like (laughs) i really think it's that simple (laughs) Yeah. 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 And I'm just going to wrap up kind of the two uh, points that you Mm -hmm. made and kind of bring them together around. I think a big benefit would come up is having those kids who are beating up that other kid with a doll or shaming other people in those scenarios to ask themselves more why and say, why is it that I'm so concerned about that? Why is it that I think it's wrong that he's carrying that doll? Um, Because Either it could be that I'm like, I shouldn't care at all. (laughs) It's just like, why am I even bothering about this? But also might be that it's like, oh, well, maybe I'm thinking that because I've been told constantly that boys can't carry dolls. You know, it's just like, I think we just have to like bring, bring people back and just to be more critical in terms of their thought and their approach to things. Yeah. Um, Well, I was just going to say really quickly too, two, two things. I think both listening to you both and Robert to what you just said a second ago first is that. Like, you're right. It's just, it's so societally driven, right? And if you get it, you see it, you hear it, it keeps getting, and that does largely come from the educational piece, right? And being, going to school. So you hear it, you hear it, you hear it. And, you know, school is kind of still taught in a lot of ways, like toe the line, do what everyone else is doing. Mm -hmm. Listen to this, you know, person who's supposed to be your mentor and guiding you and, you know, educating you. And so they're, they're taught goes in, comes out, goes in, comes out, goes in. You know what I mean? And it's just like repetition too. And I think that might go back to the earlier mention of laziness too. But just like, if you just keep hearing the same thing and seeing the same things over and over again, you're just on that hamster wheel of doing what you think is right. I also think the second thing, I think a lot of people take offense, if you will, to someone being different because they're jealous, right? So Mm. I bet, I bet Mm. you, I bet you those other boys that were beating up the the boy at the little girl doll because they were jealous that they they probably wanted to carry around a girl doll. But, you know, they if they did, they would probably mm. go home and get it from Oof. their dad. who's like, you know, God, guys don't play with dolls. You know, that whole thing. And it's like so deep. The other thing it just made me think of, too, is like growing up as a girl, you're not supposed to play with trucks, right? any gender or any way you identify can drive a truck. So why couldn't you play with it? Yeah. Yeah. That's, right? that's super deep. It's like, they're not beating up the kid. They're beating up their own desire to hold <laughs> onto that doll. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, amazing. Thank you for all these amazing, amazing insights. Uh, I'm going to bring us out of discussion mode into play mode because we're hey. going to do an open scene today. We've got oh. ourselves an amazingly talented improviser who's been at it for years and we're going to get their skills brought to the stage here while we just do a simple open scene, which we haven't done in a while. And so- Amy's here as well. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Ah. <laughs> I'll give improv a try. I've heard about it. I've heard Every about it. <laughs> um, David, do you want to be our random generator of a word, a uh, a thing? Yeah, yeah. The random word is for? is fan. 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 Mm-hmm. fan. All right. Okay. All right. So we are starting a scene, open scene, based on fan. getting a little hot there a little bit (laughs) (laughs) i uh should have listened to you too hot 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 too rest of the cheer squads here i guess we should get into it (laughs) yeah i uh 
got to tell you folks something. I, I, I didn't practice the new cheer at all. You didn't? No. Gareth, what are you doing? I, I was in line at Costco trying to buy a fan. Gareth's not ready. Gareth's I, not ready. I'm we, not ready. Gareth, you're supposed to be the top of the pyramid. I, I am a top. You don't have to worry about this. All right. Gareth. But are you the so top open. of the pyramid? That's what we need to know. I will end up at the top of the pyramid. Don't you worry. We're depending on you. Okay. Listen, I can't get up there by myself. I'll marshal the rest of the team. Yeah. Get him. Well, and Chatelaine is also the quarterback for the team. So we have to have her at the base. Trish, it's pronounced Chatelaine. I'm yes. sorry. Sorry. Chatelaine. I'm just really nervous about this. It's tomorrow. We are great. We are the best cheer squad in all of this. Tri-state yeah. area. Yeah, the tri-state areas. Gosh. Which are? What are the tri-state areas? Come on. You know that calms you down. New Jersey, yes. New York, Pennsylvania. Thank you. There we go. And we have there to go into go. Manhattan, the heart of all cheer, right? Cheer, all cheer is nothing but Manhattan. If, if Manhattan is one thing, it is cheering. So we That's have to right. go there and we have to be the best damn pyramid that we can be. We are going to be. You are, we are ready, freaking out. Yes. I'm ready. I'm are ready. we going to go into this? We're going to do it. All right, Chatelaine, right. I want you to kick us off because you're the base, so you're going to land first. Chatelaine's ready. Yes, that's what I want to hear. Yes, Chatelaine. All right, in three, two, one. <clears throat> How's it look, coach? <laughs> She's giving us How's the thumbs chance, up. How's your chance, Gareth? Get up there. Uh, yeah. Uh, Gareth, I got your feet. I got your feet. Oh. Do you feel stable? I do. They're loving it. They're loving it. <laughs> Chatelaine, how are you down there? I've never been more stable in my life. Oh my God, your rippling back muscles feel like the foundation for our whole team. <laughs> Thank you. Focus. Don't okay. look at just the back muscles. Remember what happened last time. We all remember. I okay. know, but it, I'm going to squat for your jackknife, your midair jackknife. Are you ready? ready? I'm ready. Ready. I'm okay. ready. I'm going to catch you, Gareth. I'm going to catch you. Don't all worry. All right. I, it's a free fall exercise. I trust you. Okay. Right. One Whoa. and two and three, two. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Stop Gareth. her landing again. Gareth. Yes. Woo! Oh my gosh! I never thought you could hold up V formation up there. We won the tri-state areas cheerleading competition again. Well, not yet. Let's see if we can recreate this tomorrow. Uh, well, you have to tell the universe what you want. I know, I know. You're I putting it. out there. You've always been big on the secret. I believe we're gonna win, Trish, Garrett. Yeah. I think we learned a little something about improvising. I we think did. you're better at cheer than you think you are. <laughs> and I think Gareth has a mean V. <laughs> I love my mean V. <laughs> Everyone loves your mean V, Gareth. <laughs> and I and have a Trish. mean B. Sorry. <laughs> See? <laughs> I really want to know what each of those letters actually translate into. Yeah. Amazing. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much. That was great fun. Brought me that my was. joy of improv for the day. I've missed improvising with the two of you. I know. I know. Uh, Amy, do you have yes. anything that you want to take away from the conversations today? Insights. Ah, uh, wow. Um, I didn't know that I could still get to the top of the pyramid. So that <laughs> um, sure can. You've always been right? a top. <laughs> um, and that trust fall. Yeah, I know. I almost, I almost thought you were I, just flying. Yeah, like you just I think this away. Is, no, but you know when they they leave the and they fall and then the the rest of the cheerleaders catch them. Mm -hmm. that's yeah, what yeah, I yeah. That's what I was expecting. I was just like, yeah. do I make the sound that I've received you, or do you make the sound? That <laughs> <laughs> Which is, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, amazing. Well, insights are. You know, I think that we still have a lot to learn as a planet um and we still have a lot to teach and i think that 
even though, you know, we talked earlier about some days we just don't have the spoons or we just don't feel like we should be doing the heavy lifting or like, why do I have to be the teacher? I, I think that, you know, it does all kind of come back to education. And I think even if we don't really feel like we've got it in us to be in a teaching moment, you know, we are these special unicorns that are the ones that have to teach people that just don't get it. And I yeah. think I realized that in talking to you two today, that sometimes I just, I, I forget that, you know, I am on this planet to share what I know and who I am and a special message. And so sometimes I, I have to check myself when I just feel like, well, wh why do I have to do this? You know? And I feel like, if all of us just kept saying that, then that is also part of the reason why people aren't learning, right? So we just have to keep teaching, even if we're exhausted, even if we just feel even, you know, a little unsafe sometimes. I'm not saying don't feel safe in teaching somebody something. Obviously feel safe. If it's not safe, get out of there. But I think that, you know, as frustrating as it can be, people just aren't in a lot of cases, people just haven't caught up to us yet. Yeah. And I think that there's a lot of that. And that that also ties into that whole jealousy piece we talked about. Um, people who conform and toe the line, so to speak, will always be jealous of people who don't. And I think that's my biggest takeaway from today. Yeah. I, I'm gonna, um, Amy took all the words out of my M. <laughs> so uh, I think I'm, I'm going to summarize that in the version of a familiar phrase i think they are we need to check themselves before they wreck ourselves mm. Ooh, david any go. insights <laughs> my takeaway is curiosity if you think someone is different from you have you spent any time listening to them as opposed mm. to making assumptions or just like verbal diarrhea all over them and be like well this is what <laughs> i think about whatever <laughs> it's like can we be more curious? You know, that's how we yeah. bridge differences. I think that's Amazing. beautiful. Thank and you, Also, David. don't forget, there's something between A and B. Mm -hmm. There is. Right? And middle. I think that's how I live my life. I'm between A and B. Mm -hmm. Oh, Robert from <gasps> We lost Robert. But, but look at how he's like. He's back now. Amazing. No, he's like. Okay, yeah. No, 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 I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Amy. Oh, thank you. And you have a little something I plugged earlier on in the show. Would you like to tell us some more about it? Uh, yeah. Um, so we have an online improv show coming up on Saturday, June 12th at 8 p.m. Eastern. It's called Cut To, an evening of improv comedy. We haven't uh, launched any of the socials around it yet, but we will soon. Uh, it's going to be a pay what you can event and uh, there's six of us, um, some folks that I have met since moving out east and um, don't worry, I don't love them any more than I love you two, uh, but fantastic improvisers. It's going to be a really fun night. Uh, again, it's called Cut To, an evening of improv comedy and we're going to be launching the event soon, so keep an eye out on Facebook for that. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Amy. And thank you to all of you out there into the intertubes for listening to Tissues of the Day. You can follow David at BitButton on Twitter and Instagram, and you can follow myself at Robert F. Mackay on Instagram. Follow and subscribe to BitButton. Turn on those notifications so you get all the updates of all our shows as they come out. And remember to stay wet, Internet. Or dry or something in between. Oh, right? Amazing. And remember, moisturizers, just moisturizer. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have to be split into A and B. Right? <laughs> it's fine on its own. Bye. Love you, love you both. <laughs> love you. <laughs>